we've looked at what the newspaper columnists of yesteryear called the worst sitcoms ever made. I can't imagine there'd be any more, would there? Well, unfortunately, yes, because here's the top ten, more ten of the top ten, unfunny top ten British sitcoms. More of them. Number 10, Dad, 1997 to 1999, BBC One. George Cole plays Brian, the father of one Mr. Alan Hook. Dad has an active imagination and some old-fashioned ways, and he's constantly winding up son Alan, who's a bit of a, a bit of a stressed Eric. It's apparently a generation gap comedy, but according to the Amersham Advertiser in 1999, this is a quote. Tragically unfunny sitcom with once brilliantly funny George Cole. Tired jokes and wooden acting make this a sitcom one should only view when watching paint dry becomes too exciting to cope with. <laughs> what is he doing in there? I mean, how long does it take to find something completely revolting to put between two slices of bread? Never knows what was in them last week. It tasted like kitty cat. Over here! Ah, oh, there you are. Sorry I'm later than we said. They took an age with your prescriptions. I don't want everyone in the street to know I need pills. All right, I'll carry it. Did you change your plimsolls for a proper pair? No, no, I decided to get a refund. You mean you were actually coming in here? Yes, they're ordering some trousers for me. Oh, God, I thought for a moment you were actually buying some here. Well, I did buy them here. They were too long. Oh. <laughs> I buy all my clothes here. Always have done. <laughs> oh, my God. Number nine, Close to Home, 1989 to 1990 ITV. This sitcom starred Paul Nicholas as a 40-something veterinarian and recently divorced father of two teenagers. His vet's practice is in his home, and the series draws comedy from the frustrations of Nicholas's character juggling his private and professional life whilst still very much under the thumb of his ex-wife. A one-liner in the Dublin Evening Herald of October 1990 tells us everything we need to know. 7.15. Close to home. Horrible unfunny sitcom. I turn my back for one second. Next thing I knew, there's this little frightened face staring out of the leg of my knickers. <laughs> Just going round and round and round and round. Well, look on the bright side, Mrs. Greenwood. At least these colours haven't run. Oh, gave me a nasty turn, I can tell you. Well, don't worry, Helen. I'll buy you a whistle. As soon as they start with a heavy breathing, you just give them a blast down the line. No, from Sicily, James. Well, is Frank all right? He won't be by the time I've finished with him. Why? Apparently, Frank's got himself a girlfriend. A girlfriend? Well, what are these? Oh, these are my old textbooks when, when I was a student. Dad, we're doing farm animals, not pterodactyls. <laughs> Very funny. Number eight, Holding the Baby, ITV, 1997 to 1998. Nick Hancock, yes, that Spurs supporter, starred in this sitcom that was apparently the 16th highest rated of the year in 1997, but in the papers it was a different story. Despite quite a fanfare leading up to the show's release, the Liverpool Echo in 1997 refers to Hancock as the new Tony Slattery, always on TV and always in your face. The article applauds They Think It's All Over and Room 101, but states that all this, sadly, has spoiled by him starring in a role in that dreadful sitcom Holding the Baby. Still, at least he can console himself with the thought that some women apparently find him attractive. I could name one myself, but I wouldn't want to embarrass my mate Susan Critchley. Well, Susan, consider yourself embarrassed. I've had the two bananas, you know, and as soon as things start to move, she'll be the first to know. No, 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 it's not, it's not our mum, it, it's, it's Kate. What, Kate's mum? Margaret on the phone? Yeah, you know, the, the, the mother of the woman you married, the warning sign that you never heeded. Hello, Margaret! <laughs> yes, yes, thank you very much for that lovely outfit you sent for Dan's birthday. <laughs> yes, it, uh, it certainly was unique, yes. <laughs> no, no, I think that the, uh, you know, the licorice all sort looks, um, it's coming back, yes. <laughs> Look at all this green and purple. It's a well-known fact that this particular combination is really bad for the spleen, yeah? The source of all anger. Once we've brought these colours all back into harmony with your aura, you'll start to see everything more positively. 
Number seven, Land of Hope and Gloria, ITV, 1992. Sheila Ferguson starred in this one. Yes, she of the three degrees, no less. And Joan Sanderson was in this as well, playing the sort of character that Joan Sanderson always plays. If you mix these two names up, you of course get Joan Ferguson. But that's just for you Cell Block H fans out there. Beaumont House, a stately home in need of some sharp increases in income, ends up on the cutting edge of American marketing, as Ferguson's character is appointed to modernise the whole estate. But it wasn't well received in the press. Just look at this diatribe. When is a comedy not a comedy? When it is called Land of Hope and Gloria. The makers of this diabolical sitcom should be reported under the Trades Descriptions Act, or taken out at dawn and shot. I've had more fun listening to the entire Morrissey collection. The programme was just not funny. Even Brookside provided more laughs than Land of Hope and Gloria. Fun. Well, all right then, have an enjoyable week's break. Oh, I've certainly tried to. Oh, it should be all right. The Raleigh Manor's a very nice class of hotel. Yes, of course. Ah. Oh, well, that is, if I wouldn't be cutting across your territory, Gloria. What, mine? Oh, hell no. No, no, Gerald and I just work together. You go for it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what that concoction we were given as a sweet at luncheon was meant to be. I think it was cabinet pudding. That would at least explain the taste of furniture polish. <laughs> Not direct enough, Carrie. Twyla, why don't you come up and see me sometime, Routine? That one always worked before. Gerald, what mm. I was thinking was, mm. maybe after we do the run-through, you'd like to come up to the pink room? Why? <laughs> That's my boy. Number six, Sitting Pretty, 1992 to 1993, BBC. Diane Bull stars as a woman whose wealthy husband dies unexpectedly and she realises that he hasn't left her a sausage, so she has to move back in with mum and dad. It is, apparently, simply a dreadful sitcom. It has been described as one of the writer's most desperate failures. Oh dear, Sullivan has had his failures too. Do you remember Sitting Pretty, the comedy about a 60s good time girl with Diane Bull? Thought not. Sylvie, where's your dad? He's still in there. He went in there just after breakfast. <laughs> George, your lunch is on the table. Give him all those ill foods that Sylvie's been giving me. I don't want it. Well, if he hadn't died broke, I'd be rich. <laughs> oh, he's come out, has he? How's he looking? Does he? He shouldn't be that colour, Mum. <laughs> OK, give him my best. I'll talk to you later. Ciao. Borden, Boris's solicitor, seemed genuinely upset whilst he was reading the will. And I don't think it was because he wasn't mentioned in it. No. They were great friends, weren't they? Yes. Gordon. Hello, Tiffany. Is your mother home? Yes. Oh, come in. Oh, thank you. Hello, Annie. Um, hi, Gordon. What brings you round? Oh, just passing by. I thought I'd pop in and see you were OK. Oh, that's sweet of you, Gordon. Oh, Aunt Sylvie's just as bad. They're always bickering and sniping at each other. We're bound to. We're twins. But I would have thought twins would have got on with each other. Of course not. We love each other and we would do anything for one another, but ever since we were born, we've been in competition. Number five, Up the Elephant and Round the Castle, 1983 to 1985 ITV. This one starred Jim Davidson as Jim London, who becomes the owner of a property where one of his relatives leaves it to him in the will. He largely spends his time at the DHSS, in the pub, or on the lookout for Crumpet. I'll let this synopsis in the Newcastle Evening Chronicle say the rest for me. Jim gets into trouble by doing a favour for his neighbour. Jim Davidson in staggeringly awful sitcom with raw script and underdone performances. It actually gained 14.3 million viewers for its first episode, so maybe this review is just an odd one out. What do you think? You see, we are a family firm of bad debt collectors. Oh, no, Jeffrey, don't say the milkman's put the heavies on me. Oh, bungle. We are concerned with Mr. Aubrey Winston Morgan, who borrowed the sum of £40 from the Acne Marsh Finance and Double Glazing Company. Aubrey Winston Morgan? You never met Elaine, did you, Jim? No, mate, no, I ain't seen you since you was married. Last time I see you, you was happy. <laughs> She was like a little Dresden China doll, Jim. Almost flawless, but not quite. What, you mean she was a bit cracked? <laughs> no. That Deirdre is bad news to me. Yeah, you know, nothing's gone right since I've met that girl. 
No, the relationship is jinxed. No, I don't want to see it anymore. Pity. Yeah, it's a shame, really. Yeah, but have you ever got a feeling you're not going to get on with someone? The thought did cross my mind when I collected this last night. <laughs> Look, I said I'm sorry. Look, why don't you just go and phone your old woman? She might be sitting at home waiting for you to give her a call. Oh. I hope you realise it's highly illegal, demanding money with menaces. Not menaces, dear, promises. <laughs> Keep your voice down, we don't want the whole world to know, do we? Number four, Rich Tea and Sympathy, 1991 ITV. This ridiculous comedy is about a conservative and a Labour supporter who fall in love. But of course, they are ideologically mismatched, as are their families. This sitcom star Patricia Hodge, Dennis Quilly, Lionel Jeffries and Jean Alexander. Although Jean being in it has upset somebody, look. Why has the talented Jean Alexander allowed herself to be part of that awful sitcom Rich Tea and Sympathy? It takes the biscuit for boredom. Nice pun there. You should write for the Reader's Digest, Iv. How about this piece? When the final episode aired, it's the last episode of the present run of this skillful, if exhausting, farce about the biscuit factory tycoon George, his home life in Digestive House, and the huffy personnel manager, Julia. I only have a clip of the titles for this one, sadly. Do you think we could find the time? Or the inclination? To be two. Rich tea and sympathy untie the bonds of family. Number three, The Piglet Files, 1990-1992 ITV. Nicholas Lindhurst stars as Peter Chapman, a.k.a. codename Piglet, an MI5 agent spying on the Russians. It's so secret he can't even tell his missus. It wasn't well received by reviewers. Have a look at this. Why do all the terrible sitcoms seem to carry on forever? Nicholas Lindhurst is excruciatingly awful in a show written by MI five-year-olds. Terrible pun, I know, but a ruddy sight better than tonight's piglet title, The Hunt for Red Decoder. Do people still say ruddy anymore? Oh, not Mr and Mrs Mogadon. <laughs> We saw them only last week. It was two months ago, actually. Oh, was it? Does it come round that quickly? Don't be so hard on Hendrix Morris. He did bring us that Lithuanian. And what a coup that was. He's given us nothing of any use. Really? So where the hell did you get to? Where did I get to? Where did you get to? I looked everywhere. Well, when all the alarms went off, we had to make a run for it. Oh, lovely. So you just let me do it. I had to come home on the bus. <laughs> so what? Perhaps you'd care to explain this? Well, what's that? Well, it looks like a listening device to me, Peter. What do you think? Well, I don't know, to be honest. Uh... Listen, you sod, I shouldn't have to suffer this alone. <laughs> Louise has just taken me through her last labour minute by minute, and believe me, it did not exactly help down the liver casserole. Where the hell have you been? I've been worried sick. Um, well, like I said, I, I had to work late. Doing what? Delivering milk tray? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Duck Patrol, 1998 ITV. Richard Wilson and David Tennant starred in this short-lived sitcom about the Thames River Police. Many of you have mentioned this one in the comments, and according to the press, this series was unceremoniously dumped after terrible ratings and a critical hammering. It was said that there was absolutely no risk of anyone dying laughing at this reasonably conceived yet cack-handedly executed show, but at least the scenery was nice. Apparently, Richard Wilson was more amusing in the Flora adverts. Everybody thinks all fats are bad. Oh, holly! Well, let's have a look at the show. Ollie, is there any chance of you loitering towards a boat today at all? Well, I might possibly have to pick up my suit, probably, first, for the wedding. You know, we're fully stressed. It's not going to tie with his knees. Someone can fill in for me. No. Darwin. 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 Take her in your arms and tell her after a night with you she'll never look at another man. No. Good to see you've settled in. Carry on. Thanks. You've been given a permanent posting to this station. 
And number one, The Right Way. Extremely recent for this channel, but included here because so many of you have mentioned it so often in the comments. BBC One 2013. 2013? What are we doing this far ahead? I suppose it is ten years ago now, isn't it? Anyway, this one was written by Ben Elton and is generally accepted as evidence that he is no longer remotely funny. Set in the health and safety department of a local council, it is an extension of Elton's It's Political Correct It's Gone Mad! line of comedy that he traded in for so long. Lauded for terrible scripts, awful acting and predictable and dull plots. This one is a new one to me, to be fair, so let's have a look. Some elementary ergonomic spatial awareness. Oh my god, so a YouTube moment. <laughs> Mr. Rant, what's the noise? Oh really, Mrs. Johnson, I am drying me trousers because they got a bit wet when Clive pressed the knob too hard. <laughs> You two should get a safe my bro. That was enough sick last night hanging with the U turn stuff, I was telling you. I have placed a polystyrene cup in mid trousers. Yeah, looks rubbish. And there you have it, another 10 absolutely garbage sitcoms. Did I miss any out? You let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends and all that good stuff. Bye for now.